Thanks very much, Peter. We are so pleased to sponsor the Switzer Income Conference. No doubt investors have been faced with challenges with meeting their investment income objectives in a low interest rate environment, coupled with continuing COVID-19 risks. Given these conditions, investors have been increasingly seeking alternative investments to achieve consistent, reliable and diversified sources of income. I'm Yinpeng Chu, Director of Strategy at Qualitas. I am responsible for fund strategy and investor relations for the Qualitas Real Estate Income Fund, that is QRI, a pure play commercial real estate debt fund listed on the ASX. In our presentation, I am excited to introduce you to the commercial real estate debt asset class, that is CRE debt for short. I will also present the QRI opportunity, an alternative investment specializing in CRE debt, which aims to achieve attractive regular income whilst preserving capital. Private debt is the provision of lending by non-bank or alternative lenders and their contribution to the global credit market is significant, representing almost 50% market share. Alternative lenders also provide private CRE debt, which is the provision of loans to finance real estate, both for investment and development purposes to commercial borrowers. The size of the Australian CRE debt market is 410 billion, and given its underrepresentation by alternative lenders, it can provide some attractive risk-adjusted returns. Investors can access the CRE debt opportunity through QRI, which is designed for investors looking for regular monthly income, capital preservation, and portfolio diversification. Importantly, QRI benefits from the investment management and property expertise of Qualitas. So just a quick overview of Qualitas. We are a leading Australian alternative real estate investment manager with funds under management of 4.2 billion across real estate private credit and real estate private equity. We were established in 2008 during the GFC at an opportune time where banks were pulling back their CRE lending and alternative lenders backed by growing investor capital identified a unique opportunity to fill the funding gap and grow their market share. We have built up an extensive track record over 13 years, having invested $4.7 billion of investor capital for real estate assets valued over $14.6 billion. We have closed more than 200 investments and incurred zero losses of invested capital, which is testament to our disciplined investing. CRE debt is an asset class that offers compelling benefits for those seeking income. CRE debt seeks to generate monthly income by providing loans to commercial borrowers who require funding for real estate purposes. The income stream is predictable because the loan interest and fees are agreed upfront. So this fixed income is known for the duration of the loan. Here on this slide, we show the investment universal income. The private CRE debt can provide some attractive risk adjusted returns compared to other investments especially when compared to equities and traditional property, which are higher up on the risk curve. CRE debt is predominantly provided by banks. However, there is a part of the market that is provided by non-banks or alternative lenders, which is referred to as private CRE debt. And this is where the specific alternative income opportunity lies. When looking at the capital structure here on the left uh, and the wind up of a company or sale of assets, Secure debt, as you can see, always is repaid first, followed by unsecured debt, subordinated debt, hybrid, and then lastly, equity. The key feature of CRE debt, CRE debt is it is classified as secured debt, the highest priority in the capital structure. So these investors always get their capital repaid first. I will now discuss the dynamics at play that support the CRE debt market opportunity for alternative lenders. We estimate the Australian CRE debt market is 410 billion, where banks dominate, making up 90% of all CRE lending. The remainder 10% of the market, around 41 billion, is provided by alternative lenders, a sector that while small is well established and has been growing steadily, becoming more sophisticated in funding solutions for borrowers over time. In the past 10 years, Australia's total CRE debt market has doubled from around 200 billion back in 2012, with year on year growth of two to 5% per annum. And this growth has, has been primarily driven by population growth, urban expansion, and increase in property values. Not only has the overall CRE debt market grown since, since the GSC, and in recent times, banks have been withdrawing from the CRE lending. 
leading to a growing shortage of debt capital for borrowers and better opportunities for alternative lenders such as Qualitas. The structural and permanent shift in bank lending appetite has been as a result of increased APRA regulation and government oversight. Alternative lenders continue to gain market share to fill the funding gap left by banks and to meet increasing borrower demand for flexible financing of which borrowers are willing to pay a premium for. Over the last decade, the Australian economy has been relatively sound compared to other countries with uninterrupted GDP growth and good population growth. It is expected that post COVID these fundamentals, fundamentals will return. Despite a macroeconomic backdrop of COVID-19 continuing to impact various parts of the country, Australia has generally demonstrated a level of economic resilience as supported by the government. We are seeing no major distress in the CRA debt market and generally these conditions in Australia are more favourable than offshore markets, which has led to increased investment activity from both domestic and offshore alternative lenders in recent months. A very low interest rate supports cheaper borrowing generally and increases demand for loans and in turn uh, supports positive property yields and valuations. So Qualitas is well positioned in the Australian market due to our long-standing local presence and deep borrower relationships built on trust and repeat lending over many years. Qualitas is a through the cycle investor and we are sector agnostic always seeking to invest in the best risk-adjusted return opportunities, having regard for the timing within the cycle of the market. Why do we believe that the private CRE debt market in Australia is sustainable and has further growth? Well, firstly, CRE is highly capital intensive and is always transacting or being developed. The CRE cycle and asset class is generally most always requires debt funding. The CRE debt market is not only growing by 2 to 5% annually, but the market share of non-banks is also growing as banks continue to pull back. The chart on the bottom left shows the decline of bank CRE lending over time. Comparatively, on a global scale, non-banks represent 49% market share and the more established and sophisticated European and US markets, the non-banks hold 53 and 60% respectively. These stats demonstrate the importance and permanence of alternative lending in the global financial system, and that Australia's private debt market has further capacity to mature to these levels of participation. Alternative lenders own 41 billion of the market or 10% market share now, but this increased from 6% about five years ago. So for every 1% of market share that non-banks pick up from here, that's 4 billion of capital going into that segment. We anticipate that non-banks will gain a further 10% market share in the next decade, which means a further 40 to $50 billion increase. The CRE debt asset class is highly resilient in times of volatility, given its unique capital preservation characteristics, whilst offers attractive risk-adjusted returns. The highly regulated ADI CRE debt book now has one of the lowest impairment rates of less than 1%, compared to other asset classes with no increase during COVID. And from what we have observed in the private CRE debt market, there is no major distress and we have not suffered any impairments or losses on the QRI loan portfolio. We expect that impairment rates for alternative lenders are likely at similar levels to the ADIs, although this depends on both the experience of the lender and the quality of the sponsor, as private CRE debt is a highly specialised asset class and actually requires the skill of a specialised manager. In our view, the resilience of the CRE debt asset class was proven up during COVID-19 through QRI's stable performance, both in premium returns achieved around 6% per annum and stable NAV performance due to no impairments, which we'll go into further details later. In terms of the asset allocation for investment portfolios, we believe that CRE debt is unique in that it can fit into three asset classes being fixed income, property and alternatives. Diversification across the capital structure is also important to diversify risk. Hence, an allocation to debt may be suitable for investors looking for less capital volatility than investing in equity. Whilst the determination of asset class allocation is based on individual profiles, CRE debt provides additional diversification regardless. 
In summary, CRE debt is a good defensive and income focused asset to hold alongside other income generating asset classes typically found in investor portfolios. I will now take you through the QRI opportunity. Having successfully established a wholesale real estate debt funds platform, we felt that 2018 was the right timing to further diversify our investor base and bring a similar CRE debt offering to the retail market in a listed and liquid form. We're very proud to have launched QRI as the first income focused real play CRE debt fund listed on the ACX during a time when investors were increasingly seeking alternative income sources at attractive risk adjusted returns. QRI has a simple credit strategy, investing only in CRE loans to well-established Australian commercial property investors and developers, which are all secured by real, real property mortgages, uh, which are distinct from equities, bonds, and corporate loans. Here we show a diagram of how QRI generates income from, for investors. Quite simply, the pooled investor capital of QRI is used to make loans to commercial borrowers for financing their property investments and development. Qualitas as investment manager sources and originates all lending opportunities. We undertake the loan assessment and due diligence to ensure it meets QRI's investment mandate and objectives. Those borrowers make loan and interest payments, which is collected as income for the fund, which in turn is paid to QRI investors as a distribution. As QRI is a listed investment trust, it does not pay company taxes and therefore all income is paid out in a financial year to investors. QRI pays monthly cash distributions, targeting a return of RBA cash uh, and a margin of five to six and a half percent. As of 31 October, 2021, QRI met all its investment objectives and delivered a distribution return of 5.98% per annum, which demonstrates excellent risk adjusted returns for investors. The QRI portfolio comprises of a well-diversified portfolio of, of 31 loans, which are predominantly senior first mortgage. QRI's performance during COVID-19 was solid with no impairments recorded in the portfolio, re resulting in a stable NAV, which has been the case since the IPO, and importantly, there's been no deteriorations in returns. QRI's unit price, however, was impacted by COVID-19-induced bear market in 2020, despite no impairments experience uh, or deterioration of returns. And this created a dislocation in the unit price to its actual asset values. And as a result um, of our direct efforts to support the unit price and improve secondary demand, coupled with investors returning confidence, the unit price did return back to par trading in February 2021. We have demonstrated that over the past 12 months that we are able to support the unit price in times of volatility. And the current trading um, for QRI uh, reflects QRI's strong and stable performance and the resilience of the CRE debt asset class. Importantly, we're an experienced CRE debt manager and we instill discipline in appropriately pricing our loans, commensurate to the risk taken for the current market conditions and in line with market pricing. We will never go up the risk curve for the sake of achieving excess returns. We take an active management approach to the QRI portfolio from our in-house origination, undertaking rigorous investment due diligence to select the best loans. And we conduct ongoing individual loan reviews on a monthly basis. We know all of our borrowers individually and our loans are high quality. 92% of the loans are first mortgage, 8% are second mortgages. And we lend across the life cycle of real estate as represented by the diversification of the loan types within the portfolio. We have a high exposure to the residential sector, naturally due to property developers having the highest borrower demand for alternative lending. However, in recent times, there has been compelling opportunities for residual stock loans. Over time, we expect that our residential exposure will naturally amortise over the next six to 12 months as the residual loans are progressively repaid. The portfolio is 100% invested in Australia and with 94% in our Qualitas core markets of Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. One of our current investments includes a 35 million senior investment loan to finance a B grade Melbourne CBD office property tenanted by a government entity, the borrower being a private high net worth investor. So in, in summary, I leave you with our key takeaways. 
Investors had continued to support QRI given it seeks to offer attractive risk adjuster returns in this low interest rate environment and provides capital preservation in times of volatility. QRI's performance has been strong with consistent returns delivered, no impairments on the portfolio since the IPO or during COVID-19. The alternative lending market continues to grow and QRI is well positioned due to Qualitas, long-term market presence and deep borrower relationships. As a leading real estate investment manager with extensive track record, we are committed to educating our investors in CRE debt, a highly specialised asset class. Thank you for your time.